everyone, welcome to another edition of Autocar India's Quick News, your weekly scoop on all those hot launches, all those big exclusives and of course all that hot news in the automotive sector in India and beyond. But before we begin, do remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest uploads. Now, the auto industry in India is seeing one of the biggest sales slump it has seen in decades. That though did not stop two big automakers having their global debuts of two brand new cars back to back right here in India. Let's start with the first big unveil, it's the Kia Seltos. The Kia Seltos is the Korean automaker's first product for India and aims straight for the Hyundai Creta. The new Seltos will be launched by the end of August and will come with three engine options, a 1.5-litre petrol or diesel with a manual and automatic gearbox and a 1.4-litre direct injection turbo petrol that will come with a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic. The Seltos will come loaded with features like a 10.25-inch touchscreen, a heads-up display, a 360-degree camera, a sunroof, ambient lighting, ventilated front seats and a Bose sound system. Now, while we have brought you a glimpse of the Kia Seltos right here in this video, there is a more detailed walk around of the SUV on our YouTube channel. So make sure you check that out. And of course, if you do want to read up on the SUV too, you can visit autocarindia.com, our website. We've got all the details for you and a lot more. Now though, let's move on to our second big unveil this week. It's the Renault Triber and the Triber is a sub 4 meter 7 seater MPV. Now we've seen that formula being used before in the Datsun Go Plus. But this one is a lot more premium. The 7-seater sub 4 meter MPV is quite well styled and comes with scuff plates and 15-inch wheels that gives it a more SUV-esque look, just like the Quid. The Triber also gets virtual gauges and a new 8-inch touchscreen on the interior, while the third row passengers also get their own AC vent. The Triber is powered by a 1-litre petrol engine that makes 72 horsepower and 96 newton meters, and there is no diesel on offer. For more information on the Triber, check out our detailed walkabout video on YouTube or read up on all the details on our website. Let's get to the launches now and there are a slew of updates this week from Maruti Suzuki. Now, uh, the Alto and the Baleno has already been updated to meet the BS6 regulations that will kick in next year. And now it's the time for the Swift to get its own updates to meet the BS6 regulations. Let's have a look. Maruti has updated only the K12 petrol engine on the Swift to make it BS6 compliant. The updated engine makes exactly the same horsepower and torque as before but fuel economy has dropped marginally to 21.2 km per litre as compared to 22 km per litre. Maruti has also updated the Swift to meet upcoming safety norms, which means that the car now has a co-driver seatbelt reminder, a speed alert system and rear parking sensors at standard. Prices for the petrol manual and AMT have gone up between 12 and 15,000 rupees, while the diesel manual and AMT have had a price bump of between 3 and 6,000 rupees. But it's not just the Swift that gets its BS6 updates this week, it's also the recently launched Maruti Suzuki Wagon R. And yes, there's been a price bump across all variants here as well. While the Wagon R is available with both a 1.0-litre and a 1.2-litre petrol engine, only the K12 1.2-litre motor has received BS6 updates for now. Also considering the fact that the Wagon R was launched in India at introductory prices, the expected bump in prices coincides with the updates on the car. Prices for the 1.2 engine Wagon R variants have gone up by an average of 21,000 rupees, while the 1 litre engine variants have an average price hike of about 12,000 rupees, accounting for all the variants. And in more Maruti news, the automaker has also launched a CNG version of the Alto 800 on the LXI and the LXI optional models. As compared to the petrol models, the CNG versions are about 60,000 rupees more expensive but come with the same amount of safety kit as standard. The engine on the Alto 800 CNG is BS6 ready and just like its petrol powered versions will also meet the upcoming crash norms. Now, we told you about this a few months ago and now Mahindra has finally launched the final edition of the first generation Thar. It's christened the Thar 700 and gets a few cosmetic updates and one major mechanical one. Only 700 units of the Thar 700 will be made and the SUV will only be available in either a black or a special aquamarine shade. The Thar 700 will get ABS to meet the new safety regulations but will not get airbags. It will also get decals along the side and on the bonnet along with a badge with the Thar 700 logo and Anand Mahindra's signature. The 700 is priced at 9,99,000 rupees, about 50,000 rupees more than the standard version. And that's not the only Mahindra news we have for you this week because the automaker has announced that very soon it will be increasing the price of its models by up to 36,000 rupees. SUVs like the Scorpio, Bolero, TUV300 and the KUV100 NXT 
will see a higher price increase in general as compared to cars like the XUV500 and the Marazzo. The hike will be mainly due to the fact that the cars will have to be upgraded across the range in order to meet upcoming safety regulations. In the midst of a major slowdown in the auto industry and with sales figures getting lower every month, it will be interesting to see how these hike in prices affect Mahindra sales. Now, automakers have been doing everything possible to get customers back into showrooms to buy a brand new car and that has resulted in a fair few special editions being launched in the last couple of weeks and now here is one from Honda. It's called the Amaze Ace Edition and it marks the fact that the car has now done 1 lakh sales units in just 13 months since its launch. The Honda Amaze Ace Edition will feature blacked out alloy wheels and a black lip spoiler along with matching door visors and door trims. It also gets leatherette black seat covers. Available with both petrol or diesel, the Ace Edition is based on the top of the line VX trim and gets both a manual or a CVT option on both engines. The increase in prices for the Ace Edition over the standard VX model is 13,000 rupees across all engines and gearbox options. Tata Motors has updated the lineup of its Tigor AMT variants. It now gets a mid variant and a fully loaded top spec version. Let's have a look at the details and the prices. Replacing the single XZA variant, Tata Motors now offers two variants for the Tigor AMT, the XMA and the XZA Plus. While the lower variant comes with a simpler Bluetooth enabled infotainment option, the top spec gets a touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The price for the XMA variant is 51,000 rupees cheaper than the now discontinued XZA, while the XZA Plus variant is 34,000 rupees more than the discontinued variant. Now for something very, very exotic on two wheels. MV Agusta has launched the F3 RC in India and only six units have been allocated for our country. Let's feast our eyes on this magnificent looking motorcycle. The fully fed F3 RC or Reparto Corse is powered by a 798cc three-cylinder engine that puts out 153 horsepower and 88 Nm of torque. The F3 RC has a claimed top speed of 240 km per hour and will cost a whopping 21,99,000 rupees ex showroom. The bike will also come with special bits like a fiberglass rear seat cover, a special bike cover, a rear paddock stand and a limited edition certificate of origin. A KTM already has the RC200 and RC390 in its lineup and now it's time for the RC125. The KTM RC125 gets the same internals as the 125 Duke with a 124.7cc single cylinder double overhead cam liquid cooled motor that produces 14.5 horsepower and 12 Nm of torque. The RC125 is priced at 1,47,000 rupees, but this is an introductory price that will go up soon. Now, the Triber isn't the only big announcement Renault made this week. The French automaker also announced that it will stop selling diesel engines in India from 2020. Renault's 1.5-litre K9K engine is popular amongst the likes of the Duster, but the automaker is finding it expensive to make it meet BS6 norms. With sales of the K9K powered cars down to just 11,892 units in financial year 2018-19, the automaker has announced that it will try to see if they can still make the engine meet BS6 regulations using an LNT or a lean knock strap method. Interestingly though, Mahindra has already announced that it will be updating this same engine to BS6 when it laid out its BS6 plans a few weeks ago. And while one automaker winds up its diesel engine operations, Hyundai has said exactly the opposite. Hyundai has confirmed that it will upgrade its 1.2-litre three-cylinder diesel engine, which currently powers the Grand i10 and Accent to BS6 standards. Hyundai India managed to work around the cost issue thanks to its parent company, which had already invested in upgrading its diesel engines to Euro 6, which is similar to BS6 for the European market. Hyundai is in particular keen on swooping into the space that will be left behind once the Maruti Suzuki Desire goes. The diesel version of Maruti Suzuki's popular sedan sells around 1.2 lakh units a year and the Korean automaker hopes to substitute these volumes with the Accent, which of course will be refreshed next year. Similarly, with the discontinuation of the diesel versions of the Swift and Ignis, Hyundai will have the budget diesel car market all to itself and hopes to dominate it with the next generation Grand i10. For more information on Hyundai's plans for small diesel cars in the future, check out autocarindia.com. Now, while BS6 seems to be an immediate issue concerning the auto industry at this moment, electric cars and electric vehicles in general seems to be a matter of popular discussion still. And in order to boost the electric vehicle segment in India, the Indian government has some plans. 
The Ministry of Road Transport and Highways has issued a draft notification towards exempting electric vehicles from registration charges in an effort to boost electric mobility in India. If implemented, the move is expected to cover all categories of electric vehicles. Electric vehicles already have a lower GST rate as compared to conventional internal combustion vehicles and also get a special green number plate. The government is also pushing for a move mandating sales of only electric three-wheelers from April 1, 2023 and April 1, 2025 for electric two-wheelers below 150cc. Let's stick to electric two-wheelers for now and with Revolt, which is one of India's newest electric two-wheeler makers. They've launched their first electric bike. It's called the RV400. The RV400 will be launched later this year and bookings for the e-bike will open on June 25, 2019 for Rs 1000 rupees on Revolt's website. The bike has its battery packs mounted in place of where the conventional internal combustion engine would be. The electric bike also has a bolt-on subframe, an upside-down fork, a monoshock and disc brakes. Revolt has also opted to have the rear brake lever on the handlebar in place of the clutch lever that one would find on a conventional motorcycle. Check out our first look video on our YouTube channel or for more details, visit our website. And that's all we have for you this week on the show. Do tell us in the comment section below what you thought about all those new cars and bikes that were launched in India and of course those two big global unveils, the Kia Seltos and the Renault Triber. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching.